The same thing happened last month when Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney held a business roundtable in Bedford Heights, Ohio. He did it at a plant in that town called American Spring Wire. American Spring Wire bills itself as North America's largest manufacturer of valve and commercial quality sprint wire. They also make something called PC Strand, which is pre-stressed concrete strand. Um, at his visit to American Spring Wire, Mr. Romney hammered away at President Obama for not being tough on China, not the way that he, Mitt Romney, would be tough on China. But the company Mr. Romney chose for his backdrop that day, the company that he chose to implicitly help him make that case, so happened to be a poster child for success by President Obama in getting tough on China. In 2009, in the first months of Mr. Obama's presidency, American Spring Wire joined with two other makers of steel wire to ask for help. They said China was unfairly dumping steel wire in the United States market at artificially low prices. They asked for help. Under President Obama, the Commerce Department said they would investigate, and then the Commerce Department did move to protect American Spring Wire. They did crack down on China for dumping their underpriced product, thus benefiting American Spring Wire in exactly the way they had asked to be benefited. They got the help they wanted. A company that was then used as a backdrop for Mitt Romney saying President Obama had not been tough on China. Today, Mr. Romney gave what his campaign billed as a major address on economic policy. This is part of his closing argument for the presidency. He delivered the speech at a company called Kinsler Construction Services. And in this speech, Mr. Romney argued that President Obama's stimulus had failed to help private companies. A new stimulus, three years after the recession officially ended, that may spare government, but it won't stimulate the private sector any better than did the stimulus of four years ago. That's what Mitt Romney said today on the campaign trail at Kinsler Construction Services in Ames, Iowa. You know that blissful moment when you're waiting for the other shoe to drop? When you can see Dave Letterman scrutinizing the ties to look for the tag to see where it's made? You know you're in that, you're in that moment right now? Um, as noted at Think Progress today, Kinsler Construction Services benefited from almost $700,000 from the stimulus that Mr. Romney says did no good for any companies in the private sector. You can try to make the argument that the stimulus, stimulus program did, did not help private businesses, even though the evidence shows the opposite is true. But when you're trying to make that false argument that the stimulus program didn't help any private businesses, as you are standing at a private business that the stimulus helped, that is a particular kind of implicit lie. And the rest of us can see that lie as it is unraveled in real time by reporting. Even if you, the teller of that particular lie, do not seem chastened by the experience of being caught out, right? Here's another one. Mr. Romney spoke yesterday in the town of Defiance, Ohio. Part of why Ohio's economy has begun to bounce back is that we did not just let Detroit go bankrupt, as it were, right? The Obama administration bailed out the automotive industry saved the industry, and it has roared back to life, and the big three are hiring again. Well, yesterday in Defiance, Ohio, Mitt Romney gave that Obama administration success story a little Mitt Romney-esque tickle. I saw a story today that one of the great manufacturers in this state, Jeep, now owned by the Italians, is thinking of moving all production to China. Wow. Mr. Romney saying, hey, don't get too comfy there, uh, Ohio, with the Obama rescue of the automotive industry. I know it's been better. He saved everything here, and that's why you have jobs and everything. But don't get too comfy there, Ohio. I read that they're moving all the jobs working for Jeep. They're moving all the Jeep jobs to China. He said that in Ohio on the campaign trail 12 days before the election. And it is not true at all. The real Jeep news that day was actually that Chrysler announced it was adding 1,100 new jobs in the U.S. here, making Jeeps in Detroit, Jeep Grand Cherokees. And Chrysler says it could hire almost as many people for work at another plant in Warren, Michigan. In Ohio, Chrysler's investing half a billion dollars in its Toledo plant and hiring 1,100 workers. But Mitt Romney got up that day, got up yesterday in Defiance, Ohio, and says, you know, he read somewhere that Jeep is moving all of its production jobs to China, all of them. That's ridiculous. What is he talking about? It's embarrassing for Mr. Romney, right? I mean, why on God's great campaign trail would Mitt Romney get up in front of 12,000 people in Ohio and tell them the auto bailout actually hasn't helped you at all? Your jobs making Jeeps are going to China. I read it somewhere. Where's this story he says he read somewhere? We found it. Here it is. 
he was apparently trolling the nether regions of the right-wing press. He found it on a Washington Examiner blog post, which reported, uh, quote, Jeep, an Obama favorite, looks to shift production to China, a move that would crash the economy in towns like Toledo. Is this true? This is not true. This is a conservative blogger's misreading of a Bloomberg report that actually was reporting good news for Jeep. The Bloomberg report was that global demand for Jeeps has risen to the point where the company can sell more of them in China. And it wants to build Jeeps for China in China. This is good news for an American company, not bad news. They're not shipping any American jobs overseas. This doesn't mean less work for Americans. This means they're just adding, they're expanding overseas. Thanks to the auto bailout that Mitt Romney opposed, Chrysler stuck around long enough to win again. Yay! Or as Mitt Romney put it, Jeep, now owned by the Italians, is thinking of moving all production to China. Look, I, I, I cover campaigns for a living, right? I understand that politicians inflate and conflate and duck and dodge and weave and even dissemble sometimes. That is not what Mitt Romney is up to here. Mitt Romney is just flat out lying to the voters of Ohio and by extension to voters all across America on the basis of something he happened to read in the right-wing blogosphere. His lie is embarrassing, frankly, and it should be unsettling for the rest of the world. I mean, imagine Mr. Romney waking up in the Lincoln bedroom or whatever, checking his conservative Twitter feed and then just running with whatever he finds there. Hey, I read somewhere that Russia did a thing. You know, and, and Mr. Romney is not wising up here. He made that same kind of mistake when he tried to say in the second debate that President Obama had not said the word terror when he talked about the Benghazi attack in the Rose Garden the day after the attack. The president had, in fact, used that word. But if you read the conservative blogosphere and the conservative blogosphere only, that never happened. And that apparently was enough of a fact check for Mitt Romney. That's what he read, so that's what he believed, so that's what he tried to use, and what turned out to be a humiliating gotcha attempt that failed before the largest possible audience, right, between 50-something million people watching him fail in a presidential debate. I'm the president, and I'm always responsible. And that's why nobody's more interested in finding out exactly what happened than I did. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden, and I told the American people and the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened that this was an act of terror. I think it's interesting the president just said something which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a spontaneous demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me let me call it an act of did terror. Did you say that a little louder, Danny? You know, they never took back the, the Rose Garden thing. They never corrected that. After Mitt Romney said in front of 50 million people, you never said terror. They never took it back when he was proven wrong. They never took it back, at least they haven't taken it back yet, when he said that Jeep is planning on shipping all of its production to China. It's not at all true. He said it on the campaign trail. He has not taken it back. They never took it back about the American Springwire factory where he was making the case that President Obama hasn't been tough on China when he's speaking at the, com at the company that asked the Obama administration to get tough on China, and they did, and that's in part why the company is still there. They never took it back on the stimulus company. The, st the company that benefited from the stimulus while Mr. Romney was there talking about how no companies benefited from the stimulus. They never take these things back, right? I mean, and it is, it, it's okay for your, your uncle who watches Fox News all day and yells at the TV to say, I saw that story somewhere, right? But when you want to be president of the United States, you can't keep proving that your first line of intelligence is the suffocating oxygen-free right-wing blogosphere. And that something that you read on a right-wing blog that isn't true ends up going directly into a presidential candidate's speech. Stuff is not true just because you read it somewhere. And yet twice now, in the closing weeks of this campaign, we have seen Mitt Romney operate that way. Democrats and the Obama campaign believe they see an end game here, connecting these different kinds of Romney campaign problems that the Romney campaign never corrects itself. The Democrats now, you can tell, believe that they can sell the voting public on Barack Obama as the candidate you can trust to tell you the truth and to believe what he says against Mitt Romney as the candidate you cannot trust. Integrity has become the Democrats' issue now. 
integrity and trust. That's their closing argument. 